Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA Administrator makes announcement at AUDSI Exponential. Congressman wants more Air Force fighters. Santa Monica Airport continues, but one business shutters its doors. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 5th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Speaking yesterday at the AUVSI Exponential Conference in New Orleans, FAA Administrator Michael Huerta announced the agency is establishing an advisory committee that will provide advice on key unmanned aircraft integration issues. He also announced plans to make it easier for students to fly unmanned aircraft as part of their coursework. Huerta said the Drone Advisory Committee is intended to be a long-lasting group that will help identify and prioritize integration challenges and improvements and create broad support for an overall integration strategy. Intel CEO Brian Kostranitz has been asked by Huerta to chair the group. Huerta also announced the FAA in the very near future will start allowing students to operate UAS for educational and research purposes. As a result, schools and students will no longer need a Section 333 exemption or any other part of authorization to fly provided they follow the rules for model aircraft. Faculty will be able to use drones in connection with helping their students with their courses. And in the meantime, the proposed FAR-107 for commercial drone operation continues to slog its way through OMB approval. Congressman J. Randy Forbes has written an editorial for the Wall Street Journal saying that Congress should restart production of the F-22 Raptor or find its replacement. In the editorial, which was posted on the congressman's website, Forbes said that the decision by then Defense Secretary Robert Gates to end the program after 187 airplanes were built was a mistake. Forbes writes that the U.S. Air Force fleet is the smallest and oldest it's ever been, while Russia and China have been fielding and exporting new fighters and sophisticated air defenses to countries like Iran. The Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh warned last year that new airplanes and development in those countries will be better than anything we have today. While the price of resurrecting the F-22 Raptor would be high, Forbes said it would be nothing compared with the cost of losing air superiority in future conflicts. The F-22 was conceived in the 1980s. It was the first fifth generation fighter that Forbes says still outclasses everything else in air to air. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. While the fight to keep Santa Monica Airport operating continues, one business on the airport has decided to close their doors. Justice Aviation will be shutting down after 23 years of operating on the airport and will vacate its offices by June 10th. The flight school in the city came to an agreement that was approved by the city council last week. Justice Aviation will receive $450,000 from the city to compensate it for the closure. According to the Santa Monica Lookout newspaper, along with the cash payout, the agreement calls for Justice Aviation to withdraw a federal lawsuit challenging an attempted eviction from the airport, as well as two filings the school has made with the FAA. It will also end Justice's participation in a class action lawsuit against the city, 
challenging excessive and unreasonable landing fees recently imposed by the city. It's Thursday, which means it's time for an Arrow Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week we take a look at our friends at the Society of Aviation and Flight Educators, known as SAFE. We all know that the very foundation of success in aviation activities is education, and SAFE is an organization that embraces all facets of aviation education, whether it be on the ground, in the simulator, or in flight. SAFE is a member-oriented organization of aviation educators, fostering professionalism and excellence in aviation through continuing education, professional standards, and accreditation. By joining with industry partners and the FAA, SAFE provides the aviation community with resources to advance the profession and to assist aviation educators in developing skilled, knowledgeable, and safe members of the aviation community. We at ANN are honored to be able to work with an organization that takes a professional approach to aviation education and includes all disciplines of the educational process. After these messages, China Eastern Airlines adds to its Airbus fleet. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Now Bree is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Christopher. China Eastern Airlines has signed a purchase agreement with Airbus for 20 A350-900 aircraft. China Eastern Airlines operates one of the largest Airbus fleets in the world, and with this order, Airbus has received 803 firm orders for the A350-XWB. Master Instructors LLC said four instructors have renewed their Master Instructor designation in the month of April, while one was designated a Master Emeritus. They are Michael DeMulling, Michael Jesh, Daniel Keene, Kyle Thomas, and Ludwig Wuponik as Master Instructor Emeritus. Violinist Rachel Barton Pine has gone public with her dispute with American Airlines after being denied boarding by a pilot who said she could not bring her instrument on the plane as a carry-on. Her one-of-a-kind violin is valued at $20 million. Brussels Airport officially reopened its departures hall during a short reopening ceremony last Sunday. The opening ceremony was attended by employees of the airport community and the emergency services, as well as representatives of the highest authorities of the country. Echodyne Corporation has announced the development of an airborne detect and avoid radar for small to medium-sized unmanned aircraft systems. It is believed that this device, when thoroughly developed, could lead to UAS operation beyond the line of sight of the operator. That's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Christopher. Thanks, Bree. According to reports, a proposal has been put forward to help the more remote locations in the northern part of Canada to celebrate the Canadian birthday next year with a series of well-planned air shows. According to a CBC News report, the air show event would be called the Canadian Arctic Aviation Tour 2017 and would involve air shows being performed at 97 northern communities. It's reported that the organizer, Nancy McClure, said what we hope to do is be able to provide the same opportunity to people that live in northern communities as would be provided to anybody living in the south part of Canada. McClure said, the air shows will vary depending on the location of the event. 
In the report, McClure is quoted as saying, some of them will have the Canadian Forces Snowbirds or the CF-18 demo team. McClure added that all locations will have a core crew that includes the Canadian Forces Skyhawks. It's reported that the promoters of this event are still waiting for confirmation that the government will participate by providing funds. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.